Okay, so I get asked quite often about um, small solar panels and the question is do I need a solar charge controller and my answer to that is almost always a resounding yes. Um, of course there are always always caveats to that but uh, you know the bottom line is um, what we have here today is uh, a 160 amp hour bank, two group 27 DECA marine batteries. They say West Marine on them, but they're made by DECA East Penn out of Pennsylvania. Actually, these are what, what, what they call a dual purpose battery, so sort of a hybrid dual purpose. But a lot of boaters use them. Actually, these are a, a, a set of customer's batteries. Uh, they're very healthy for their age, and they're wired up in parallel and connected to my, my benchtop power supply. And as we can see right now, we are in absorption mode, or what is considered co uh, constant voltage, CV, that red light is on. What that indicates is that the power supply is maintaining 14.4 volts. And we can see that it requires just about two tenths of one amp to do that. So we look at a 160 amp hour bank that's 100% full. At 14.4 volts, it takes roughly two tenths of an amp. That is an acceptance rate which means the battery is only going to accept 0.125% of its 20 hour capacity. So these are 80 amp hours a piece. That's a 160 amp hour bank. And to maintain 14.4 volts, it takes just two tenths of an amp. The power supply is hovering between two tenths and a tenth of an amp, but that's what it takes. If we look down here, we can see that a 10 watt solar panel can supply six tenths of an amp, which is about 6.25 percent of the capacity. Again, up here, uh, and then a 15 watt panel can supply one amp. So very quickly, what I'm going to do before I run out of time, my my camera here. This is a point and shoot. It doesn't give me much time, but so I have a fluke meter uh, connected directly to the batteries, monitoring the actual battery voltage. The power supply also shows that, but of course, there's cabling, so we we want to account for any voltage drop. What I am going to do is I'm going to turn the power supply up as high as it will go. This can go to 30 volts. We're going to see immediately, because the current is turned all the way up, that this will go all the way up to 30.4 or 30.5 amps of output, because this is trying to get to 30 amps, which it can't do. The batteries aren't going to like it. So I'm going to do that, and that's going to take the voltage right out of the way. So we're, we're just, you see what happened here? Now what I'm going to do, because we don't want the battery sitting at that kind of voltage for very long, is I'm going to control the current. See, we just went from uh, absorption or constant voltage, now we're into constant current or bulk mode for the charger. And I am going to turn this power supply back down to 1 amp. Now we can see, remember, a 15 watt solar panel is roughly 9.4 percent of the capacity. And the general rule of thumb that you read on the internet is you don't need a solar controller if your panel is smaller than 10% of the capacity. Well, really, what we see here is we have one amp, which is about what a 15 watt solar panel can do to this bank, and we're pushing 15.1 volts. So, if your battery bank were to get full with a 15 watt solar panel, there is potential if you don't have any loads on that bank and this boat sits there or I have one customer with a bass boat, he leaves it sitting in his driveway for sometimes four or five weeks on end. He's got a little panel, he connected, to it, connected it to his uh, trolling battery and cooked it. Just fried the thing. And this is why. Because one amp on a 160 amp hour bank will push the voltage to 15.1 volts. And we can see that the fluke meter and the power supply are pretty much in agreement there. I'm going to go back down with the current. I'm going to take her down to six tenths of an amp. Okay, and we can see the voltage is starting to fall a little bit, but still, again, six tenths of an amp would be a 10 watt solar panel on a 160 amp hour bank. Again, we're still at 14.9 volts. That may go back to 14.8 or so, but still, even a 10 watt solar panel has the capability to push this 160 amp hour bank when it's full to 14.9 volts. You cannot do that. You cannot leave the battery with that kind of voltage on it. You're going to boil off the electrolyte and you're eventually going to ruin the batteries. They need to float at a voltage somewhere between 13.2 to 13.6, maybe 13.8 depending on the manufacturer. I'm going to take her back down to, to two tenths of an amp 
and as we saw before um, it just uh, you know it was holding 14.4 now that we've uh, you know driven that voltage up they're taking slightly less this is going to eventually come back down to the 14.4 and it would stay there all day but when I drop it back to even a tenth of an amp which is the lowest this uh, power supply will read for me she'll still maintain over 14 volts that's too much so yes most solar panels used on boats with no loads connected to the batteries uh, if the batteries are just going to sit there and charge and you're going to go away and you might not use the boat for a couple weeks or longer and the batteries do have the potential to get a hundred percent full a solar controller is a good idea they're inexpensive they'll uh, they'll maintain the voltage and uh, they'll protect the batteries again these batteries should be floating at about 13.6 roughly and um, even at a tenth of an amp I know these batteries will take about two to three hundredths of an amp at 13.6 volts uh, and unfortunately I don't have my, my clamp on uh, amp, amp meter that goes to that range right now otherwise I could show that too but the bottom line is you can see that even at a tenth of an amp we're still maintaining 14.3 volts and that's too much so a tenth of an amp solar panel is really really small and uh, a 15 watt solar panel again pushing one amp of current pushes that battery voltage right back up to almost 15 volts so hopefully this helps people understand um, why a solar controller can be important